Now plants are objects in the program and objects are things that can be manipulated, being sized, rotated, and moved around on the screen unlike texture areas like the pavers and the graphs that we've put in already. So you can find all the plants up here under the object library. If you click on this icon you will be given these different categories. Plants are under plants. So if you click on plants you'll get a pull off menu where you have all the different categories of plants and you'll see under shrubs and trees they have subcategories of northern and southern. The reason we did this is people in northern climates would tend to use a certain set of trees opposed to those in southern climates. For example you will not find a uh, Podocarpus in the northern library because they just won't grow in that area. This house here looks like it's in a northern area, so I'm going to click on the northern tree library, and the library comes up on the screen. These libraries can be moved around the screen anywhere you want. They can be reshaped and resized however you want to uh, arrange them, and they will stay in that place. For example, if I put them down here and I minimize it and bring them back, they come back to the same place. Again, watch the library uh, movie. It'll explain this better. I personally like to put my libraries at the very top of the screen so that they don't get in my way as I'm landscaping and designing. So first of all, you're able to scroll through all the plants in the library. They're in alphabetical order and they're by their botanical name. Until you find the plant that you want, you can double click it and it comes up on the screen. Now you notice the library is still here. If you're like me and you like the library to be minimized after you've brought up a plant so you could work, click here where it says library and click on shrink after use. So then you'll see the next time I bring up a plant, we'll just do it to show you. I brought up the plant and the library got out of the way. So now I want to take this tree and I want to place it here in the backyard making it look like it's behind the fence. First of all, to move an object on the screen, what you need to do is just simply click on it and drag it to the new location, release your mouse, and it moves. This tree is a little too big, so what you do is you go to any one of the corners and grab them with your mouse, so you click on that corner, drag it to the size you want the tree to be, and then release your mouse, and the tree is sized down. So I'm gonna pick this tree up, and I'm going to place it right there. Now, I want to make it look like it's in the backyard, so I need to cut it off here at the house, and I'll need to cut it off at the fence. To do that, you go up here to the eraser tool, and one of the tricks is by using frame, it cuts things a little bit faster, so everything within this frame I'm going to draw will be cut off. So I just made a frame, clicked again, and it cut everything within that square. Now I'm going to just manually cut the tree here. By left clicking, I'm cutting. If I go up here and right click, it will bring this tree back along the edge of the house. And it looks like I got a little sloppy, so I'm going to zoom in by pressing F10. Remember, you can always zoom in when you're drawing and cutting. I'm going to left click and just trim this tree off. Now it's off the edge of the house. Put a little bit more back here. Zoom out, pressing F9. And we'll completely zoom out. And now that tree looks like it's in the backyard. So I'm done cutting. I click OK. If for some reason you made a mistake and you want to undo something you cut, you can hit the undo here and it will back me off and bring part of it back. Um, or you can hit cancel and you'll be able to start all over again which we don't want to do. So we'll click OK. And now we'll bring in the next plant. Now I'd like to place a few shrubs in front of the fence in this corner over here. So again, I go back into my library. I'll go to plants. I want shrubs. I want northern. And it brings up my plant library. Again, we scroll through it until we find the plant that we want. We double click it. It comes up on the screen. To size it, we grab the corner handles, drag it down to the size we want it to be and then move it into place. It's a little big, so I'm going to size it down again. Keep in mind, you can always size things up or down, so it doesn't matter if I sized it down too far. And like some programs, you cannot size back up. This program remembers the object and the size that it was, so you could size it all the way back up, and you do not lose quality of the image. 
So now I want two more of these plants. So to do that, I would go up here to the duplicate icon, which is this icon right here, and I'm going to click on it. And you see that my cursor has turned into the two dots with an arrow. Wherever I click now is going to produce another plant exactly like this one. So I'll click here, it added another one, and I'll move it over here and click again. And now I've added the three plants that I want. Now, if I keep clicking, I'm going to keep adding plants. But you don't want to do that to stop the duplication um, procedure. You right click and it cancels it and it selects on the last plant that you duplicate. I want to get rid of this one, so I'll just hit the delete key and we got rid of those. So now I'm going to rearrange these a little bit. I want this one to look a little bit different so I'm just going to flip it by going up here to flip H which means flip it horizontal and it creates a mirror image of it so they don't look exactly the same. And we're going to size the middle one down just a little bit to make it look a little bit different. So now I have my little grouping that I wanted here. Now I want to put a hedge here in front of the house. So what I'm going to do is go back into my libraries, go to plants, and here are hedges. So I want the first hedge here. I double click it. comes up on the screen. Let's close that library. Again, I will size it down. Place it in here. Now you can see my hedge is kind of going off at the wrong angle. Not a big deal because I could change that by using the warp tool. So we'll go up here to warp. So I'm going to change the setting to vertical here. So now all I have to do is just pick up this handle. And you see this line that's going across here? The top of that hedge is going to line up with that line. Then I'll click on the bottom. And I'm just kind of spinning the hedge around. I'm not really spinning it, but I'm just giving the illusion that it's going in the right direction here. That looks good to me. So we click OK. And I have my hedge there. Now I want to put something in front of the hedge. Again, I'll go back into the libraries. Now I've placed three Nandina Domestica dwarfs in here, but I want to show you a trick. And the reason why I did this is these three are all the same and they look exactly the same because they are the same. But in the library, I have multiple choices here of different Nandinas I could use. So you see this one is a little more red, probably was taken in the fall, so it has a little more color to it. I could always switch one of these out by simply clicking and dragging it over the plant I want to switch to, and you could see it just switched it to that plant. And then I could stretch it out to make it look a little bit more like the other ones. I can also take, uh, well, let's do something totally different. This one here and drop it in there and you can see it switched that one out also. So you can always change the plants to make them look a little bit different or if there are multiple plants in this case of Nandinas we got probably at least 10 different uh, versions of it so you could switch them out. Now let's take a minute to discuss layers. Every plant that you put into the image will go on a layer and they go in the order in which you put them. For example, I put in this dogwood tree in here first, so it's going to be at the bottom of the list. Then I put in the Euonymus on top of that, then I put in the uh, hedge here, and then I put in the Nandinas. Now I want to take this juniper and let's size it down. And I want to place it here on the edge of the house. But you see, it's in front of everything. I need to put it behind some of these things. Now, I could go send it back and it would put it probably behind the tree, but it's not exactly what I want. But I'm going to do that anyway. I'm going to click here to send it back. And as you could see, it put it behind everything, but it is behind the tree and it's not between the Euonymus and the Bucks's hedge that I put in here, which is where I want it. So to do that, I'm going to select on the Juniper. You could go up here to by name and you'll see that the program gives you a list of everything that you put into the program and the order in which you put them. So now the juniper, because I sent it to the back, the back is the bottom of the list. If I want to bring it in front of everything, I click on it and drag it up the list and now it's in front of everything. But I want to put it between the Buxes and the Euonymus. So I click on it and I'll drag it to right there and now it's exactly where I want it to be. So there's more than one way to up a layer or down a layer with, a li with an object or a plant. You can also do it one layer at a time by going here under tools and going up uh, one layer and down one layer, but I find that that takes a little more time 
if you use the select by name and you know the names of the plants that's a much faster and easier way of doing it now I'd like to show you a little trick let's say that you want to place in a border of flowers going around the walkway and the driveway here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a plant that has a lot of flowers on it in order for this to work. If I use, say, like this plant here, first of all, there's no flowers. Why would you use it? Um, but any of these would work also. But I know that the red is going to show up. So what we do is we take the plant, we'll size it down, and you always want to start in the back and work your way forward. Otherwise, things are all reversed and it's more work. So now I want to duplicate this. I click on the duplicate icon and I'll just click down and create a whole bunch of these now don't worry if they're hanging over the driver or anything because what we're going to do is cut them now I always find that it looks a little more realistic if you take the ones in the front and you make them a little bit bigger than the ones in the back just for the perspective purpose of it so that's good enough there now the next thing you want to do is you want to group all these together so you can merge them if you try just selecting on them and holding down the shift key which could work but I inevitably miss one and you know if you miss one the whole thing doesn't work so the surefire way to do it is to go up here and go to select by name and you'll see that they're in the list here and they're all at the top and they're impatience red so what you need to do is click on each one so that it gets a star next to it and it's selecting each one of these if you can watch down here while I'm doing this you'll find that I'm selecting all of them now that I have them all selected I click OK now I want to merge them together so I do that go up here to objects click on merge objects now they have become one complete object now you want to cut them so we'll go here to the eraser tool make sure that the eraser is selected here when you go to crop and what you want to do is make a crop mark anywhere on the screen so that they will all be erased so now there's nothing there then you want to click on unerase now I'm telling you to click on unerase so that you could draw with the left mouse you could have left it on erase and right click to unerase but it's just easier to do it this way so now all I have to do is just draw in where I want these impatience to be because what I'm doing is just basically bringing them back but I'm only bringing back the area that I want to and of course drawing with the mouse is not always the easiest now I want to make this look a little uneven and we want this to be a little bit fuller here and we want a little bit of it to hang over the pavers just to give it a little more realism and there you go so when you're done you simply click OK to exit out of that procedure